So here we are. My name is Daniel Folko, and Nita M. Steintreiber, curator at the Washington County Museum of Fine Arts here in Hagerstown, Maryland. And it's my great pleasure today to give you an introduction and an overview of our wonderful new exhibition called Landscapes and Legends of Norway, William Henry Singer and His Contemporaries. And in this exhibition um, looks at our founder, William Henry Singer, but it also explores the contributions of his wife, co-founder of the museum, Anna Bruce Singer, who was a Hagerstown native. Now, Singer was a native of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and his father uh, ran a company called Singer and Mimic that originally had manufactured armaments during the Civil War. So Singer came from quite a bit of money, and so he had the ability to devote himself to a life of art. He decided at a young age that he did not want to be uh, part of the company. He wanted to pursue a career as a painter. He was also a draftsman. And so that he did, even though his father disapproved of him doing that, and his mother encouraged him. So what Singer did is he started out in the late 1800s studying with a man named Martin Borgord. Martin Borgord was about the same age as Singer. You're going to see a couple of his works in the exhibition. And he was essentially William's uh, first art teacher at the Allegheny School of Art. Right here you're looking at a portrait of William that was painted later in his life. And uh, here he is uh, looking at us rather confidently with his circular eyeglasses. And this is painted by another one of his friends named Isidore Opsumer, who was a Belgian artist. Now, the thing uh, to note about this, and you probably gathered this from the title, is the exhibition also explores the work of William's friends. It includes Singer and Borgord, but also the aspect of Norway. We'll get to that in a moment. William and Anna lived in the United States only through the early 1900s. They became expatriates, hence that part of the title, Norway. We focus here, in this show, on the works that William completed once the singers found their way to Norway, to which they were introduced by Borgord, their friend. Borgord was a painter and a sculptor. So what William does is he goes to Paris, he studies at the Academy of Julian, and learns figure drawing, but he decides this really is not what he wants to do. He wants to be a landscape painter instead. And that was not emphasized at the time in Paris as much at the Academies. He was also encouraged in this regard to pursue landscape painting by Martin Borgord. So he develops this passion for nature in the landscape around him. The singers first find themselves in Paris, and then what they do is they move to the Netherlands, a place called Laren, which is outside of Amsterdam, by the early 1900s, where William and Anna befriend a number of artists in a colony called the Laren School of Impressionism. And a number of these artists, including Jacob Doyevard, who's included in this exhibition, who's Dutch, influence William's work and also provide him uh, with other sources of inspiration. So there are a number of things going on here that lead Singer to become passionate about painting landscapes. In the summer of 1903, William goes with uh, Martin Borgord to Norway, and Anna accompanies them. And instantly they fall in love with the country, particularly William. He decides he wants to go back there. He's just so passionate about its fjords, its lakes, its mountains, its glaciers. These all captivate him. Here at the Washington County Museum of Fine Arts, we're very privileged to have exclusively William's paintings of Norway. So this leads to a, a focus in this exhibition. It's one of the reason we are focusing on it is that's what we have here uh, in Hagerstown. We also have a sister museum in Lauren called Singer Lauren, and they have his paintings and drawings that depict the Netherlands, the Dutch landscape. But here we don't have any of those. When you come into this introductory gallery, be sure not to miss these wonderful drawings as well as this pastel, which is called Spring in Norway. It's perfect for this time of year, even though we're approaching summer. And we'll transition to that afterwards when we go into the Bowen Gallery. But the colors in this are just uh, gorgeous. Uh, the use of these um, greens, yellows, and golds that are contrasted with a single birch tree in the left foreground of the composition are just striking. It's a very delicate work. And this is a special opportunity for you to come and see some things that are not typically on view. Pastels, 
like this, uh, which is a kind of drawing, sometimes considered a painting too, are very fragile and very light sensitive, so they only come out periodically and they have to rest in order to preserve them. Also in this gallery, we have a biographical overview of Singer and his uh, career. And here in the case, we have a number of uh, photographs. There's also an article that explore the life of the singers together. They are going to make Norway their home by 1913. They do a bit of traveling around, but eventually settle in the village of Olden. And that's in, north of Bergen on the west coast of Norway. But if you look in this case, you can see some of the honors that William uh, and Anna received. Particularly, they funded the construction of a road that connected the village of Olden to another town called Invik, which opened in 1936 thanks to their um, philanthropy. And here you can see King Hakon VII of Norway, and he's presenting flowers and an award to William in front of his car in 1936. We also have a brochure showing an exhibition of Singer's Norwegian landscapes from the 1920s and photographs of them with their friends, as well as on the porch of their home called Dalheim, where William kept his studio. So William Henry Singer was a, an Impressionist artist, and by that what I mean is that his style was influenced by French artists um, of the late 1800s. And particularly Singer liked to, like the Impressionists, use little um, dots or um, uh, broad brushstrokes of color to build up his overall compositions. He tended to use a, quite a bright palette, sometimes a little bit darker, particularly for his winter scenes, but this was the style he went with for his entire career, ranging from his beginnings in about 1901 to 1905, all the way through uh, his death in 1943. So Singer really um, did not respond to trends in uh, modern art or abstraction that were occurring at the time. He very much wanted to stay with his own uh, style and work with that. He also was influenced by a number of American Impressionists who were working at the Old Line Art Colony in Connecticut, which flourished during the early 1900s. And it's there that Singer is going to meet a number of friends, including Willard Metcalf, um, as well as a, a guy named Walter Griffin, and we'll see his work when we go into the Bowman Gallery. Here I'm standing next to a series of beautiful drawings that Singer created for a calendar in 1927. Again, these works are very light-sensitive and fragile, so they don't come out very often. This one over here is particularly beautiful, and it's just called September 18th to October 1, 1927, and it depicts a rainbow that's extended over one side of a mountain to the other, and then we see a peak in the background. This is a striking example of how William Singer embraced the majesty, the splendor, of the Norwegian landscape in all of its glory. He likes to look at atmospheric effects, and by that I mean different aspects of the weather. We can see here how the clouds are sort of parting away, and we have the uh, rainbow, which is ever so ephemeral. It is a phenomenon of uh, weather that, uh, you know, uh, does not last very long. And this really intrigued him, it piqued his interest to depict this. Uh, it has romantic connotations, by that I mean that we can find perhaps a sense of spirituality or the divine in nature, which is something that Singer is responding to um, with the tradition of romantic European art. And we might think of an artist like Caspar David Friedrich, and it's shown here on the label, with a depiction of his rainbow that, uh, it, it, again, finding this presence of God in nature was something that really fascinated Singer. And that's what he's trying to show in this uh, drawing as well. That this uh, will not stay around very long. It's quite ephemeral. We also have uh, winter, represented by December 11th to the 24th over here, where he uses these very subtle breaks in the composition, these tiny dots to signify the falling snowflakes. And it's really a delicate composition. So tranquil, so peaceful. And the same goes for August 21 to September 3, which is over here. And I should point out, when you come to look at this particular drawing, note that he included an old um, watermill 
You can see the wheel over here. Typically, Singer does not include many references to human habitation or activity. But this, in addition to a couple of other works in his repertoire, does allude to human people. Otherwise, he almost altogether eliminated the human figure in his work.